Let's learn about inbound data shares. When you first log into a trial account, your role is set to sysadmin because it's your default role. If you're in the worksheets area, you'll see three databases listed in the navigation pane. If you navigate to the shares area, you'll see a screen describing data sharing, but you won't get much more information than that. If we return to the worksheets area and change the worksheet role to account admin, then refresh the navigation pane, we'll then see four databases instead of three. And you might notice that two of the four databases have a very simple database symbol, but two of them have a symbol that includes both a database and an arrow. The arrow symbol is there to signify to you that these databases, this collection of data, does not live within your account. It's actually being stored in someone else's Snowflake account, and that is being shared with you. We call this an inbound share. If we go into the upper corner and change our account role to account admin, and then we navigate to the shares area, we can now see some detailed information about those two inbound shares. The shares area has a toggle for switching between inbound and outbound. Trial accounts start out with two inbound shares and no outbound shares. In the shared by column, we can see that the Snowflake database is being shared by Snowflake and the Snowflake sample data database is being shared by an account called SFC samples. The secure share name is the name given to the data share by its owner. So Snowflake calls their share account usage, but it appears in your account as Snowflake. SFC samples calls their share sample data, but it appears in your account as Snowflake sample data. It may be true that after the trial period, you decide you don't wanna have the Snowflake sample data appear in your account anymore. In that case, the easiest way to get rid of that database is to drop it. To do this, you can navigate to the databases area and use a drop command from there. Or you can go into the worksheets area and run a scripted drop command. Once you drop the database, you'll notice it no longer appears in the databases area. It also no longer appears in the navigation tree of the worksheets area. But if we go to the shares area, we'll see that the share is actually still there. Only the database name on top of that share has been dropped. And when the database column is empty, the share is not usable as a data source. We can think of the database name given to a share as our way of accepting that share into our account. If you give the share a database name, it will appear as a usable data source. If you don't give it a database name, it will not appear as a usable data source. So to see that in action, let's bring back the sample data by selecting the share row and clicking Create Database from Secure Share. A dialog will appear, and in the first field, you'll put a new name for the share. In this case, we chose to type that sample stuff. In the second field, called Grant Access To, you'll choose one or more roles that you want to give access to. You don't actually define the specific privileges. Shares have read-only privileges that are imported as part of the sharing process. Then you assign the imported privileges to one or more roles in your system. In this case, we've chosen to open this share to the public role. When we close the wizard, we see that our new name for the share appears in the database column. If we navigate to the worksheets area and we refresh, we see that sample stuff appears as a database in our navigation pane. If we decided we wanted a different name for that share, we could run an alter database command to rename it, then click refresh. And once again, we'd see that this share now has a different database name.